going. I tell you what, there's a heck of a fraternity. You watch this thing. It's unbelievable to be part of. Uh, but I did what they asked me to do. Um, somebody put a, a clock on me. It's going to be eight minutes. You know, I, I've been timing myself uh, for the last six months. <laughs> so it's going to be right at eight minutes, and I'm going to read. I'm going to speed read this for you. But I thought about it quite a bit. Uh, and I finally learned this after about uh, 40 years of coaching. Usually I recognize the most important people in my life last. Tonight they're going to be first. I want to thank my family for allowing me to pursue the, my dream of coaching football. Phyllis is the proverbial coach's wife. You're the best, babe. I'm, I'm truly a lucky guy. I'm truly a lucky guy. I want to thank Phyllis, Joel, and Jeff, my two sons, for all the encouragement and support throughout the highs and lows. And there ain't been too many lows. We had a blast. The 14 bowl games were the best. I'd like to thank my mom and sister for coming down from Orlando to share this with us. Hey, thanks for coming down. I appreciate it. And I'd like to congratulate and, and thank Marcy and Bill, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law. Phyllis's sister came in from Broward. Uh, and finally, I'd like to thank all my friends for attending tonight. It's great sharing, sharing this honor with all of you. Congratulations to my fellow inductees on being inducted into the Hall of Fame. It's well-deserved. In 1974, I wrote a paper to give to all my athletes I've coached. It's called Attitude of a Champion. It begins like this. Every young man who possesses an interest in athletic competition dreams of becoming a champion. For many, dreaming is the extent of their efforts. Others are willing to go part way, but only those who have the desire and courage to do everything within their power to fully utilize their God-given ability will ever reach the height of a champion. You have to have a vision, a dream of what you want. I think we got a guy now that, that displays that at the UM, Coach Golden. Set your goals, yeah. Set your goals, roll up your sleeves, and go to work. If you can visualize it, it can be achieved. But this honor tonight, I didn't see it coming. I couldn't envision it. When Wally called me and told me I was going to be inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame, I thought I was being punked. <laughs> I told him, you got to be kidding me. I said, I got my walking papers twice from this joint. You know? <laughs> it was overwhelming. Uh, believe me, something I really never thought about. I said this before. I was a fan before I was a coach. So being enshrined in the Sports Hall of Fame with athletes and coaches I admire as a young kid growing up in Miami is totally awesome. Just to give you an example, and, and you know, there's some people here, you know, I, I saw some people, Sam Skornecki, I see some other guys here. I mean, these people, when I was a kid growing up, I was watching these guys. I said this before, I was a fan before I was a coach, so being enshrined in the Sports Hall of Fame, I, I admired these guys. Just to give you an example, here are a few of the Hall of Famers that affected my life as I was a kid growing up in Miami. Red Cameron, who's in the Hall of Fame, was my first coach. And that's probably why I got into coaching, was a great guy. He coached me behind the Coliseum. Don Bossler, the first player I started following when I, I got interested in athletics. I just worked on a committee with, with he and Holmes Braddock. What a class guy, he, he, unbelievable guy. He's not here tonight. Dr. Harry Malios, one of my high school coaches, and, and you know, people have been talking about him all night. He, he was a great guy. Julie Cohn, who played basketball here, uh, interned at Southwest High School and got me a job at a sports camp in the Poconos after I graduated high school. Uh, you know, I followed him. I used to try to sneak in and watch those guys practice at the Armory. Remember when you practiced at the Armory? I mean, it was a little basketball. It was ridiculous. I don't know. And they, you know, it was unbelievable, though. But I used to try to, you know, follow those guys, the basketball players. Ron Frazier was the director of the Carl Gables Youth Center where I grew up and played ball. You know, so that was just a few of the guys. Then when I got my first coaching job at Carl Park in 1968, 
Frank Downing used to have off-season meetings, and he used to bring in coaches. Walt Kosefsky was the first coach he brought in, and he clinicked us on defensive end play. And all the things they say about Walt's unbelievable. It's true. I, 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 was, I was awestruck when I, when I was a kid first starting out. And then I was coaching track. I was a head, coach track at, uh, head track coach at Carl Park. And uh, I had a state championship hurdler that I took to the Golden West track meet. And uh, Reuben Carter accompanied us out there. And I've kept friends with Reuben Carter all these years, you know. And he's a, he's a great guy, great coach. Then throughout the years, I followed careers of George Myra. I got, I got to coach George's son, George Jr. But, you know, we had some great battles in high school from Southwest. He played at Key West. Uh, Art Kehoe, I watched him play with Jim Burt and those guys. Matter of fact, when Jim Burt, I was, I was in the orange ball. I was in the end zone when Burt batted down the pass when we beat FSU 10-9. And then, and then later on, of course, with Art, you know, we, we coached at Miami together. And, and, you know, I say I got a bunch of great backs, and I did have a bunch of great backs, but because it's because of what Art did with the offensive line. Uh, Harold Allen was a high school coach that, that wound up making it at the UM, and he coached a defensive line here for years. You know, I followed him, Dick Hickox, Wayne Beckner. You know, I watched these guys, you know, play basketball, and Wayne helped me out when we won state championships in high school, you know, and helped us out uh, getting the rings for the kids. That's just to name a few. There are other guys in here you could go on naming that, that did so much for this community. On and on, and you can keep going. So many from the Sports Hall of Fame had made an impact on this community. Not in the wildest dreams did I ever think I'd be inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame with these legends. I, I would like to thank the coaches that allowed me to become a small part of the success that the U experienced. Howard Schnellenberger gave me my first opportunity of coaching. I mean, I could, I could get it, make it a little lengthier and, and tell you what happened, but I just had come back from uh, uh, the convention in Dallas, and I was woodlife in my deck, uh, you know, outside my room, and I get a call from Coach Schnellenberger, and he says, he says, Don, can you come in and see me? I said, sure, I'll come. You know, what time you want me there? Right now. So I said, I'm going to have to take a shower. You know, I took a shower, ran down there. And he says, uh, I come in and he, and he says, well, you know, he says, uh, Archer's going to LSU. I'm going to move Tom Olivadotti to secondary. He said, I want you to come in and coach the linebackers. You want to do that? I said, sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, you know, I said, yeah, when do, you, when do you want me to know? I said, I got to talk to Phyllis. But, you know, and, and really the funny thing says, he says, I said, I got to talk to Phyllis and, you know, I'll, I'll let you know. When do you have to know? He says, 10 o'clock tonight. And I just lost the state championship in high school. And we are the team coming back next year went to the state championship game, too. So he says, he says, yeah, let me know by 10 o'clock tonight and, and just give me a call. He says, you got any questions? I said, yo, what about retirement? And he took the pipe out of his mouth and he says, I don't want to talk to anybody that wants to retire. <laughs> and and so, so I said, forget about that one, you know. The only regret I have, Howard, is that I didn't get the coach with you. I only coached that spring with you. Then, then I like to thank Jimmy Johnson for keeping me, uh, for keeping me on the staff. You know, I was the high school, ref I was a high school coach. He referred to in his book. You know, and the first game I coached was in the kickoff classic. I was talking on the radio just now. And the first game I coached, I was coaching inside linebackers. And we, we opened up against Auburn, who was number one in the country in, in uh, the kickoff classic in the Meadowlands. And they were running the wishbone. And we held Bo Jackson to 78 yards. And Jimmy's first one was 20 to 18 over Auburn. So that was a thrill for me. I'd like to, take, I'd like to thank Butch Davis for bringing me back to the U to coach running backs and eventually special teams. It was a privilege and an honor for me to coach at the U. Many coaches walked away for greener pastures. I never wanted to be anywhere else. I love this town and I love this university. I never wanted to use this university as a stepping stone to pursue another job. This is a job I loved and wanted. I gave the coaches I worked for and the players I coached everything I could give them. It was a great run, one of the best ever in college football history. Finally, some people hit the lottery and make a lot of money. I hit the football lottery. I work for great coaches, most of all, great players. Without these players, I would never be here. 
Here are some of the players I want to thank for allowing me to express my tough love coaching style. And it was tough love, believe me. The thousand yard rushers and the fullbacks that block for them, I'm going to give, go down the list, but I want to thank Art Kehoe. I mean, we worked very closely at the U. I mean, we would argue sometimes and we'd get after it, but when we walked out of the room, we were on the same page. We were very close. Danielle Ferguson, 1,069 yards, and his fullback, Derek Harris. Edwin James, 1,098 yards, and his fullback, Carlo Joseph. Edwin James, 1,416 yards, and the fullback, Nick Williams, later became known as Nick Lucci, played at Cincinnati and, and a few other places. James Jackson, 106 yards. Mondrell Fulcher and Will McPartland were the fullbacks that blocked for him. Uh, Clinton Portis, 1,200 yards, and uh, that was Nij Davenport, and they made Jarrett play a little fullback also. Uh, the thing that people don't really, under, really remember sometimes and don't understand, the guy that played fullback in the national championship game was Willis McGahee. He had 20 practices, and we wound up beating, beating uh, Nebraska with Willis playing in 20 practices, he played the whole game at fullback because Nigel Davenport had a, broke a, had a broken bone in his foot. And, and really, uh, Jarrett really wasn't ready for that situation. Willis McGahee, the next year, 1,753 yards. Quatrain Hill and Talib Humphreys. And then Jarrett Payton uh, really wanted to play, but he was just behind so many great guys. But he had 985 yards. He was 15 yards short of 1,000. Frank Gore was always injured, but he had 945, uh, and he was a great ball player, obviously. You know, he's in the Super Bowl this year. I'd also like to mention Tyrone Moss and Kyle Cobia, and also like to mention DJ Williams. DJ Williams is a freshman, played fullback there. In that lottery, I include Brett and all the guys that played on the offensive line, and of course, Kenny and the receivers. I mean, we had, it was like a lottery, I'm not telling you. I ran into Santana Moss the other day at, at Publix, and we were talking, you know, just talking about it, you know, Santana and I, and, and it's just like a, it's like a lottery, man. That's what, we, that's what it was. You're working for the greatest coaches around, you know, with, with, with Howard and, and Jimmy and, and Butch, and, uh, you know, it's just, it was unbelievable for me, and I, I really appreciate it. I really believe all these players were dreamers. They allowed me to push them to their max. I thank them for that. I have always believed that you can get anything you want if you help enough people get what they want. It was a lot of fun. At the end of Attitude of a Champion, there is a poem that embodies why championships are won and why players lay it on the line day after day. It's called The Law of the Jungle by Kipling, and it goes like this. It says, now this is the law of the jungle, as old and as true as the sky. And the wolf that shall keep it may prosper, but the wolf that shall break it must die. As the creeper that girdled the tree trunk, the law runneth forward and back. For the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. It is a privilege and an honor to be inducted in the University of Miami Sports Hall of Fame. I thank the committee, even you, Holmes Braddock. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Great job, Coach.